Hello, and welcome to a special Tubs at the Club episode that I am calling the Martin and Patty Magical Minutes. I am your host, Martin Heemstra, joined today by Patrick. Patrick, how are you doing? I'm doing okay. Just finished up classes, and uh, we're just hanging out for the rest of today on Friday. Uh, Going to have a nice weekend, and uh, we got a, a couple of nice matchups on Saturday, both for Idaho and Eastern, because you guys know how big of an Eastern fan I am. But um, yeah, doing good. Awesome. And as always, uh, Tubs of the Club is brought to you by uh, Hughes River Expedition. If you are looking for a great all-inclusive week-long vacation to look past your backyard, Hughes River Expedition has been vandal owned and operated since 1976 and are ready to take you on the vacation of a lifetime. Enjoy a multi-trip down the middle fork of the Salmon and the main Salmon River of No Return, the Salmon River Canyons, or the Selway. Check out special trips to see, like the one to see the see the purse, purse, purse said meteor shower. That's a mouthful giggity camp on pristine beaches run amazing white water hike scenic trails spot wildlife soak in beautiful natural hot springs and fish some of the most remote stretches of river in the country you just bring your clothes and each hre handle the rest grab a paddle catch dinner and ride the bull all throughout the gym state call now at 406-540-445 or check them out at hughesriver.com all right that was a bit of a little fast going through but uh Sorry, Colin. I am sorry if I'm rushing things a little bit. I do have a little bit of energy in me right now. Uh, this is this video is we're going to be talking a little talking about the women's basketball team. Patrick, how what are your thoughts so far about how the overall like how this season has gone? You think for the team so far, and maybe compare it to last year if you want to, or just talk about this season if you want to. Yeah. So the season really started off hot. Um, you know. Women got a few really, really nice wins uh, out of conference. They beat Utah. They actually ran Utah State out of the gym. You know, they beat um, they beat Hawaii down there in Hawaii at that one tournament. They had a couple of nice wins. They looked competitive against an Oregon team. You know, they, they played and they really dominated their first couple of conference games as well. And so we looked, we kind of looked at it and we were like, oh, this is the Carrie Amy era. It might be better than the John Dooley era it was like things I was seeing like Really looked up at the beginning of the season. Uh, a couple sh- like close losses, like I think A and M Commerce came up and beat us at the end at home. Same with Grand Canyon, but there was a lot of really close losses, kind of so far in this year. And so it, this women's team has definitely it came in with a lot of you know hype and excitement, but we weren't super sure of like what what was going to be going on with, you know, John Newley has been there for so long that it's just strange, strange that John Newley isn't coaching the women's basketball team. Um, So, you know, the season started off well, and then the conference slate hasn't been the greatest. Um, You know, Idaho's five and seven in conference this year. And I mean, comparing it to last year, last year was, I don't know. We were kind of in a similar spot, maybe more of like, I can't remember exactly, but it felt like Idaho was sitting right around fourth place most of the year, third or fourth place most of the year. And like, obviously Idaho wasn't the best team of the big sky that year, but you know, with John Newley there, you always knew Idaho was going to be a good team. You always expected them to go on a little run in the tournament. And then with Amy, we just didn't know what to expect. And um, <laughs> with the timing of, when Carrie Amy was hired and when John Newley was fired, it definitely seemed like it made things tough on Carrie Amy to get, you know, talent to fill out this whole roster. So I'm going to throw it back to you here in just a second, but it definitely, it feels like a team with a lot of upside, but it feels like there's still a lot of players trying to get used to playing one at the division one level. Um, There's a number of returners, but you know, some of the, some of the main contributors on this team are players that are transferring up from D2. And then, you know, this team's really missing Hope Butera, who went down with an injury earlier in the season. And so uh, I'm going to throw it back to you and kind of get how you feel about this season. But to me, it seems like a season, one, a building culture, and two, you know, getting the wins you can, but, like, this team isn't going to be predicted to – go on a run in the tournament, but they can, they have the potential to, it's just, they're not quite there yet. Um, you know, what are you feeling about the season so far? 
I, for me, I, I think it's probably going, <clears throat> if you would have told me like this time, like after John Newley was let go, like that things were going to be, they were going to be 500. I would probably be, I would say like, yeah, I'd accept that after having 10 plus years of John Newley in Moscow, I would have, I would have taken 500. I know kind of the beginning, like the, the first half of the season kind of, kind of up till the new year was kind of like my initial reaction was, okay, maybe this team was better. And maybe they, they, this team was better and like they could maybe contend for a potential first round buy or just could get the play, the play themselves into a top four, five seed in the play in the conference tournament. But like, I, I think maybe kind of looking at that, like after the, I hate to say it, like the, the hope Buteri injury maybe did kind of change my trajectory of where I was thinking they were going to play this season. But overall, like I think their things for me are going about as I expected them to be maybe ever so slightly a little more just because I was thinking maybe there'd be some time to adjust, but like them playing 500 ball so far, I think is, I think for me is about as good as you could have told me given the timing and five, giving the timing of the hiring and the let go and the hiring of Carrie and her are able to get their staff. And I think it's been, I think it's been about as like about like minimal, about as about what I could expect. Yeah. And one thing, you know, mentioning the Hope Butera um, injury, the, the weakness of this team has been inside all year. Um, you know, coming from a newly led team, you know, a newly led team, they like to launch threes, they like their offense. And then Carrie came in and she was, she seems to be a much more defensive focused coach first. Um, and I mean, maybe I'm wrong there, but that's what the team has shown me this year. The team is a very, very scrappy defensive team. But the two things that they kind of lack right now is offensively, they haven't been great. Um, you know, they Oh yeah, like they're averaging like seven like on the Big Sky Conference stats website, they're averaging seven point seven rebounds a game on offense compared to Exactly. About I think it says twenty five point three defensive rebounds per game. So they're not doing too well like it was on a little boards. different on off yeah, on the boards, yeah. Like they're just not they're not doing as well, like I'd say post hope injury. They're but really like, missing hope. Her yeah, they hope is I hate to use hope as an excuse for the team, but like them her her injury really shifted the dynamic. I'd say like shifted like the dynamics and the focus of this team. Yeah. And if you watch those early out of conference games that Hope was playing in, Hope was getting eight, nine rebounds a game. It was like you an know, easy she, double double for her yeah. if she could have wanted. She she was the main rebounder. She was taller than everyone. She's more athletic than most players on the on the on the court. So she was just going up and getting every rebound. And now that you're you're losing her, you know, Sarah Brands is the main big. And then, you know, Skylar B's come in and play some good minutes, but Sarah Brands isn't the same level rebounder that that Hope is. You know, Ash Phillips has kind of become more of a forward rebounding. Mm-hmm player as well and she's like a solid player but it's not hope is a very hope very is someone is like a special player that you can only hate to like kind of jokingly say but like you kind of only hope to get those kind of players and she's been in the games that she played like when she was here in moscow like it was it was great to have someone like that on this team and i think if that person was on like a john newley team this team could have been though some of those newly teams could have been tournament challengers kind of thing but like it like the difference between how they played versus like before, like the fur, like before hope was like when she was there, like it was Idaho was dominating, but like the Eastern game was kind of showed like Eastern game and Moscow kind of showed a glaring hole, like how this team changed just from one, just how one, like I know people say well, injuries can't change a team, but like this, the injury did change. I did change the women's team for did change the women's team. And, and something to note, Idaho is currently in how uh, that'd be sixth place in Big Sky, seventh place, seventh place in Big Sky play. But if you look at the Big Sky stats page in in conference play, they're top half of the conference in every statistic, pretty much, except for two main things. One, opponent three point field goal percentage. They've been dead last for whatever reason. Teams just drain threes on this Idaho team. I don't know if it's a rotation thing, a defensive thing, or if it's more of a. I to me, a part of it I think is you know missing hope in the middle defensively. They're having to crash the paint a lot more. 
which allows for a lot more open kickout threes. The other stat that this Idaho team's been pretty poor at is rebounding. They're bottom half of the conference in all the rebounding statistics. Other than that, they're they're one of the top teams, you know, top four teams in the in the league all year. Um, I mean, I guess you could look at turnover margin, but again, they're like right around the same there, fourteen versus thirteen point eight. Like, it's not. There's no glaring stats besides rebounding that say, hey, this team is going to be a eighth place or what seventh place Big Sky team. I think a lot of it is like you said, it's missing hope. It's missing the rebounding and like this team could this team can go with anybody. We've watched them play with outside of maybe like the Eastern games, but like outside the Eastern games, but for the most part, like I know Montana State's had a bit of a shuffle with their players. I know they're missing Darren White and uh oh I forget her name, but she's playing a Montana State. She's playing with one of the D two Montana schools now. But like uh Kuala Koala Bad Bear, that's her name. I think it's something like that. Like she's playing in another school. Like I know, yes, Montana State's losing them, but like Montana, they only lost by I think five to them. But yes, they had to go on like a long hot streak to get back caught up in that game. But still, it's like they they can play with anybody when they want to. But they also seem to like have like like almost like the men's team almost like they have they go on those cold streaks and they just can't get themselves out of there. They do have some scoring with like Sarah with Sarah Schmidt. And Kennedy Johnson, Kennedy Johnson and Asha Phillips, for the most part. I know sometimes she has kind of kind of get lost occasionally, but still, for the most part, like they're they do have some scoring. But it's like if they can shut one down, they can like the team. The teams can shut down like Kennedy. Sometimes it just Idaho goes on a cold streak. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and a lot of their scoring since Kennedy or since um Hope's been out. They've had to rely a lot more on driving and kicking out for threes, and for whatever reason, they just haven't been shooting the three at the same clip as they were in out of conference play. And then not having the size inside makes it tough to just kind of dump it inside for the easy looks. Like offensively, this team just doesn't get easy looks very often. There's a lot of, you know, having to put to work really hard for every bucket, um, and that's been true all year. A lot of you either got to make a really tough like floater over the middle or really tough, you know, if you're getting to the paint, you're going to be very contested or it's hucking up a three. And that's been the offense this year, kind of two T. And I don't know. I, I think part of it is a lot of the talent on this team. Isn't like super offensive driven. Uh, a lot of the guards on this team are more defensive guards, um, you know, looking Amelia Longer and and um even well, probably yeah Sarah yeah not Sarah but like I know Amelie's like pretty much a defensive I'd say defense first is like I'd say is her big game same with someone like Wallace who's very very good perimeter she's very three and three and D for her mm-hmm. and so there's a number of players like that and so that's kind of what I'm seeing from this team this year and I think they definitely have potential to get better. But it's just it's gonna come down to how many points can they score in a game, and you know right now they're towards the middle of the pack to the bottom of the Big Sky in scoring. Uh, they're in eighth place in scoring offensively. Um, they're only averaging fifty nine point five points a game compared to hey if you're looking at a top team in this in the league, um, NAU is seventy six points a game, Montana seventy four points a game, Eastern only sixty four. They're kind of an anomaly, but you know. It's tough. It's tough to win too many games if you're not even going to score sixty points. Oh yeah, it's it's not good. The other thing I think I know, Patrick, we kind of talked about it like with our before we started recording was like the tempo at which they score compare like they attempt to shoot and score is slowed down dramatic. That's a maybe I'm not don't say drastically, but it's slowed down a lot comparing like the John Newley to a. Uh, the carry Amy offenses where it's like John Newley, it's like they try and try and find the open, try and find the open three person and try and shoot to get it. Now it's like with, with their offense through like Sarah Schmidt. Cause she seems to be like, like the one who are running things. It seems to be a goal kind of wait for 10, 15, 20 seconds, and then try and execute the offense where like, I'm going to kind of repeat myself where it's just like comparing years past. It seemed like the things have slowed down on offense. The tempo has slowed down a lot more on offense compared to last year's. Mm-hmm. And kind of a, a stat to look at that. 
Um, there's only one team that has attempted less field goals than Idaho in conference play, and that's Northern Colorado. Northern Colorado has shot just shy of 600 field goals attempted. Uh, Idaho is at 634, and then everyone else is up above 650. Put up, uh, there's a couple teams up in the 750, 780 range. And so, you know, the, the pace is very slow, and there has been a lot of offensive possessions, actually similar to the men's team, where you just don't get the look you're looking for off of their set play or off of their set offense. And then it just turns into, Oh, Sarah Schmidt, ISO, she's going to try and huck up a shot at the shot clock or same with, you know, Kennedy Johnson as someone else that they do that to. And so, you know, trying to get those looks early in the shot clock might be something that they want to do, but also being more of a defensive focused team first. Anyways, it, it almost turns into like a ball control type thing, trying to waste the clock, but I oh mean, yeah, I, I don't. And it's like that's... again, like this isn't like we're not trying to knock Sarah, like either Sarah Schmidt or any of the players. It's just like yeah. what, like they're all very great players, and like they've been. Yeah. I wish we could have had someone like Sarah Schmidt for longer because I think she would be, she would have been a great person to have on this team. But it's also it's just kind of, kind of like was fans like what we would want to see out of a team. But we're not the coaches; we're just fans that sit courtside at the games and see what we see. I, I don't know. I, I think the team has a lot of potential and they have, I, I'm definitely not out on Carrie Amy by any means, even though it's been, Oh, no, I'm not either. I think yeah. for her, it's like her, like, I think if I producing in public here right now, it's like Nebraska card. It's like the, it's, I think in our Carrie's first year at Nebraska with the, and Nebraska Carney wasn't like I think it was like five hundred too. So it's like they're gonna take it's gonna take time to go. It's gonna take time to for things to adjust. But I think she'll be I think she'll be fine. And eventually we'll Patrick, if you want to talk for a second, like it yeah, yeah it'll yeah. it'll it'll get better. Is what I'm trying to say. And and I kind of mentioned this earlier, but the timing of everything really didn't help her case. Um, having to f- figure out a roster. You know, shoot, John Newley. I don't remember when he was fired, but it was like kind of out of nowhere, like after the typical. It was like app was like April, the like beginning of April, if I remember right. Kind of after the typical range that you see a coach get fired or coach get let go, and so that leads to one, all your freshmen and stuff that are all your incoming freshmen that are committed are gonna likely decommit. I mean, very, pretty likely when you lose your, your, the guy you think is going to be your head coach. That also led to most of the main contributors from last year's team to transfer out. And all of a sudden, Carrie Amy's coming in, and Idaho lost, what, three or four of their starters from last year to the portal? Yeah, like, and, a couple of them lost to the portal. Yes, some of them did only go D2, but still, like, you lose people to the portal. And then you obviously lose someone big like Beyonce B, who go chose to use her COVID year, so... Vandal fans that are getting a little angry about that. She chose she chose to take her extra year somewhere else, but still, is, she chose to go to WSU. But still, it's there. There, it, yeah. My thing with that is, she announced that she was going to come back to Idaho, and then newly is fired, and then she answered the transfer portal. Mm-hmm. So you know, it, that's one that you're just like, I don't know about the timing on that one. I don't know if that was the greatest move, but hey, we're here. Now the present is Carrie Amy had to field the team on short notice, short notice. And, um, you know, for the situation that she was put in last off season, this has been honestly a solid season. Um, and if they had hope, I think this team would probably be a top four big sky team. Oh yeah. Um, Again, like the thing I was looking for kind of like, I know, yes, it is D two, but kind of just something to look at. Like, Carrie Amy's first year in the University of Nebraska, Carney, like she went 16 and four. So it like, I won't say that's kind of the expectation. Like, I don't say expect something like that. The next year when she got her, yes, her next year, her next year, like I'm kind of stat reading now is a little as like 12 and 16. So a little bit worse. I'm kind of just, yes, I'm looking at things a little bit off the, because these pages are crashing on me now, but like there, Things will be a little slow, but then, like after the first couple of years, when she gets her players in, it will get better. And they were playing for, they played, they, it, it will get better. Is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, uh, shoot, four of the starting five typical starting five players are all transfers. transfers. 
And, so, and I think I think the yeah. only people that are going to be yes, I think there's going to be some play. I, I'll talk about them in a later like video myself once the once the like the now normal signing period for women once the women's stuff is done because I have looked view watch some tape. Things will get better. I know some people are going to say like I want like Sarah Brands to be like Natalie Clinker. She can't be Natalie Clinker. She can only be Sarah Brands. She can only be Skylar B. Mm-hmm. It's like you can't want someone to be someone who they're not. They can only be themselves and be the best of themselves. Yeah, and you know, I for the situation they got put in, I think they're doing solid. Oh yeah. Um, you know, I think main... if they stay 500 the rest of the year or maybe a game under 500, I would consider that a successful first season for Carrie Amy. Mhm. I Especially mean, I think... with the with the hope injury, like yeah. it was huge. Yeah, like I, it, I hate to use like kind of like I, I like I hate to use that as an excuse, but like you can see like that was a like I think I've said this before, but like it is, it was like it did kind of change the trajectory of this team, but they've been able to adjust for the most part and try to make the best of who they can. And I, Sky, I love seeing Skyler play because I like I, I might be her biggest fan outside of her parents, not at the games. Like I will be cheering at every single chance I get for her. Like it's just good to see. It's good to see all these players that normally won't get playing time play, get playing time and play, and give productive minutes. Yeah. Um, I think that's really all I oh, got yeah. on this. That's any, and you got another, another final things. I know, I know they got. I know, kind of. We'll, you know, we'll 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 do a little producing the public. Like I know, like their last game versus. Uh, we'll get this up tonight, but like. Their last, like the last time they played Idaho State in Moscow, they lost 56 61. I know they kind of came back and then Seton Sobolewski and his team kind of pulled out at the end. Kind of, Patrick, what do you think, like going forward for the rest of the season, like what would you want to expect out of this team? I wouldn't say uh, expect I, be the right word, but kind of like what would you want to see out of them just the rest of this year? I definitely expect the defense to continue to play hard. But when you look at this, this lineup, the end of the season goes Idaho State, who's kind of a middle middle of the pack team, then Northern Colorado, NAU, two of the top standings wise teams, then Montana State, Montana on the road, again two more top teams. So th- they've got a tough stretch here, and I think we'll learn a lot about we'll learn a lot about this team in that stretch. Um, it, I think a lot of it will come down to can they improve their rebounding at all, and can they score any points. Um, you know, they, they got to be able to score 65 to 70 points to win a lot of games, just because, especially with the Montana State at Montana, well, more of a Montana and an NAU, those teams score a lot of points and they're going to get their points. You, you just got to try to keep up with them and we got to see if they can keep up with them offensively. And that, that's been what we're looking at this year so far. I am muted, but like they're the kind of, thing is like we saw like on Thursday night like anybody in the conference can beat anybody Sacramento State beat NAU in Flagstaff which is kind of a bitch I would say it's kind of a big thing I think it's it's, it's a it's an upset in the conference like Sacramento State only had won like Huge. two or three games Sac- in season. Sac- and and NAU was place. like I think tied for tied for second or first with Eastern Washington NAU was in sole possession of first place uh, because and uh, because Eastern had lost the second game uh, Sac State was—they're in ninth right now, and they started the year what? Over. It was like oh one for nine, one for like oh nine or something like that, and they beat. They beat Portland, Portland State. State yeah, now dead last. But you know, Sac State hasn't been good this year, and so seeing NAU go down is a big deal. And, and it was like they got their—they got beat too. It wasn't like a close game. It was like eighty-eight to sixty something too. I really think anyone in the middle four anybody five teams, like, yeah. Idaho, Idaho State, Northern Colorado, Montana State, Weber State, any of those teams can beat anyone on one night. Hell, even Montana, if they have an off shooting night, anyone could beat them too. Yeah, it's like oh. even Idaho had a chance to beat Montana at the end. Like this, they kind of like they they just fell short a couple they missed just a couple shots, but they still like showed they can come back from 15, 20 down to make things competitive and make things more not just make it a boring game. Like I've learned I've learned to never doubt this team being out of games because they always seem to every time and every time I seem to doubt them, they seem to want to come back and show that they can come back and compete these teams and make it a game. 
and potentially even win these games. Like they're showing, they're just teaching me not to doubt them at all this year. Good, a sign of good culture too. Mm-hmm. Never giving up. Oh yeah. But, um, with that, I think we're just about done here. Oh yeah. Any final any any last things? Are you all good to go, Patrick? I'm all good to go. Oh yeah, and as always, go Vandals. I'm not saying it. Go Vandals. Go Vandals. Thank you.